In the second unit of this first chapter, I would like to introduce you to some important concepts that will help you understand better the work, the projects that we'll see later in uh, this uh, chapter. We will speak about globalization and critical regionalism. These are two very important concepts that have a big impact on the work uh, in architecture that is designed and built today. Globalization, the first one, it is because we live in a global world and the fact that you're taking an online course is a proof of it, people have access to all kinds of methodologies, materials and approaches to architecture. What happens is that you can build in a context that is totally foreign, totally different from the ideas that you are using for your project and this work will be very different from its own context. Modern architecture has reached a point in the 60s and 70s where it was doing the so-called international style where projects were quite similar. Projects had very little relationship to the local culture, to the local materials and to the local context. That is why in uh, um, modern architecture was criticized uh, at some point. I would like to read you now a passage from Paul Ricoeur's book Universal Civilization and National Cultures from 1961. The phenomenon of universalization while being an advancement of mankind at the same time constitutes a sort of substyle destruction not only of traditional cultures which might not be an irreparable wrong but also of what I shall call for the time being the creative nucleus of great civilizations and great cultures that nucleus on the basis of which we interpret life, what I should call in advance the eternal and mythical nucleus of mankind. In the 1980s, some architects and critics like Kenneth Frampton, for example, came with the idea of critical regionalism. Critical regionalism is an idea in which you can create these regional schools which are influenced by this global architecture and global ideas but personalize them and adapt them to the specific context. This is why every building had a relationship to its climate, to its place, to its construction techniques, to its cultural heritage and to the place where it was built. I would like to now give you an as an example a passage from Kenneth Frampton's book, Critical History of Modern Architecture, chapter 5, page 314. The term critical regionalism is not intended to denote the vernacular as this was once spontaneously produced by the combined interaction of climate, culture, myth and craft, but rather to identify those regional schools whose primary aim has been to reflect and serve the limited constituencies in which they are grounded. Among other factors contributing to the emergence of regionalism of this order is not only a certain prosperity but also some kind of anti-centric consensus, an aspiration at least to some form of cultural, economic and political independence. The concept of a local or national culture is a paradoxical proposition not only because of the present obvious antithesis between rooted culture and universal civilization, but also because all cultures, both ancient and modern, seem to have dependent for their intrinsic development on certain cross-fertilization with other cultures. As Ricoeur seemed to imply in the passage quoted above, regional or national cultures must today, more than ever, be ultimately constituted as locally infected manifestations of a world culture. It is surely no accident that this paradoxical proposition arises at the time when global modernization continues to undermine with ever-increasing force all forms of traditional agrarian-based autochthonous culture. From the point of view of critical theory, we have to regard regional culture not as something given and relatively immutable, but rather as something which has, at least today, to be self-consciously cultivated. Recur suggests that sustaining any kind of authentic culture 
in the future will depend ultimately on our capacity to generate vital forms of regional culture while appropriating alien influences at the level of both culture and civilization. You can see the description of the seven points of critical regionalism which Kenneth Frampton gives us in the secondary resources of this chapter. That idea of critical regionalism was very influential and in fact we have schools in uh, many places around the world that adapted it to, to their work. For example, we have the school of uh, Catalonia with uh, some uh, architects from uh, Barcelona, we have the school of Oporto, we have the Finnish school, we have the school in the Netherlands or in Switzerland. We'll see some of this, uh, pr these projects. I would like to now show you some examples of works which would be useful to understand the concept of globalization and critical culture. Peter Zumthor's Kunhaus in Bregenz from 1991, completed in 1999, is a building situated on the border of the uh, Bregenz Lake, in uh, the border between Austria and uh, Switzerland. The building is quite different from its context. It's made out of glass uh, facade with concrete structure in the interior. It isolates completely the views from the inside uh, of the galleries towards the lake in the exterior. Even though it doesn't reveal to us uh, the lake, the architect was able to capture this atmosphere of the lake and to translate it into the spaces of the interior. He used glass ceiling and reflecting pools to uh, communicate this idea of the ice, reflection of the ice and reflection of the water uh, from the lake. The building is uh, rather introverted and um, focuses our attention on the work of art. The point about this building is that it's very different from its context. It belongs more to a global culture, to global um, ways of building and global design than of a uh, local tradition. However, it fits perfectly on in its context and it creates new paradigm in this uh, city of Bregenz, which would certainly generate a lot of interest, visits and developments in future architecture. The second example that I would like to point to you is the Portuguese pavilion from the 1998 International Exposition in uh, Lisbon designed by Alvaro Sica. The building covers this large plaza in the border between the city and the ocean. The project has large suspended uh, ceiling built out of concrete suspended through steel cables from uh, the side walls. It creates this void in the center, charge void in the center, which is a place for public celebrations and for uh, manifestations. The project on its side, probably rather inspired by, on the side facade, or inspired by Louis Kahn's geometry and idea of eternal forms. When we are next to it, we see this very thin suspended ceiling above the pavilion. This project, even if it's built from a local architect, Alvaro Sica, who is internationally recognized, brings some international ideas to the city of Lisbon. Therefore, it is a point of encounter between these global ideas, global culture and the regional culture of uh, Portugal. Another example that I would like to point is the Casa das Historias Paula Rego from 2008 by Eduardo Soto de Moura in the city of Cascais in, uh, near Lisbon in uh, Portugal again. The building uses these truncated pyramids to uh, cover the public spaces the cafeteria and the bookstore. It is built with um, painted concrete, red painted concrete, and creates really unique places in the interior. The architect, even if he is from a 
the local place from uh, Portugal, he was able to capture some ideas and some forms and tendencies of international uh, architectural culture and translate them to the local context. We see the spaces in the interior, the cuts in the facade, and the really unique ways to um, filter and let the light into the interior. Another project from Barcelona is the work of Enric Miralles and his first wife, Carmen Pinos. It's the Igualada Cemetery from 1984, completed in 1994. Enric Miralles uh, designed this project after a competition that uh, uh, he won with uh, Carmen Pinos. And uh, the two of them worked on the project for nearly 10 years until it was completed. And the project is below ground, it's a cemetery, so it goes below ground into this uh, former cave in the city of Igualada near Barcelona. The technique used for construction is uh, concrete uh, blocks for the sidewalls, so it's, it's a mixed techniques of in situ concrete and then prefabricated panels for uh, some of the facades. The project is again um, part of this global architecture which uh, used uh, very complex geometries in the 80s and 90s but adapted them to the local context, to the local uh, building techniques. A project that I would like to show you from uh, Carlos Ferrater is the Benidorm waterfront from 2010. Benidorm is this uh, touristic uh, city which is a product of uh, real estate speculation with huge towers, very dense and considered for a while very unsustainable because of its high density. Now, in fact, our, some studies show that this density is uh, um, the reason why it's more sustainable than other cities. The architect Carlos Ferreter from Office of Architecture in Barcelona designed and completed this project in uh, 2010. The project situates itself on the border of the city, on the border of this very informal high-rise uh, construction and uh, the beaches. It uses the sensual curves and, and uh, geometry to adapt this edge of the city to what the beach is. The geometry of the project welcomes the visitors to descend from the level of the city down to the beach through its curve and experience the beach, experience the sea and the joy of the summer living. Pues en Benidorm yo creo que se da de cita todas las, todo un conjunto de, de situaciones paisajísticas e intelectuales eh, que hemos llevado pues, mucho tiempo pensando, ¿no? o sea, como una ciudad del turismo, de la masificación, del ocio, del hedonismo, cómo construir espacio público, un espacio bisagra entre la tierra y el mar, entre la ciudad y la playa, que es el gran patrimonio de Benidorm, esa cáscara de hormigón fina ¿no? que va, va laveándose y construyendo con su rigidez geométrica todo el espacio entre ese desnivel que hay entre la playa y la ciudad y al tiempo va generando una topografía en su superficie eh, que, topografía que además tiene islas de vegetación, vegetación autóctona eh, lugares de estancia, lugares de recreo, lugares para vis visualizar y para ver el mar para el atardecer, 